Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for a video that was surprisingly difficult for me to put together. The last time I ranked reinforcements which was well over half a year ago, things were just a lot different. For one, there were less reinforcements and for another, there used to be a much wider gap between the top 5 reinforcements and the bottom 5. Don't get me wrong, there is still a pretty huge gap between top tier reinforcements and those who are going to come in near the bottom of today's list, but DICE did a ton of reinforcement balancing in the final few updates and it really shows because I had an extremely hard time ranking the reinforcements this time around. In all honesty, I found it more difficult than ranking the heroes and I just ended up spending a ton of time revisiting every single reinforcement to make absolutely sure I was being as accurate as humanly possible and also that I was completely basing my rank off of the current version of each reinforcement because DICE snuck a ton of nerfs in the final few updates that a lot of people completely missed. I mean, in the Scarif update alone, they changed 10 of the reinforcements pretty drastically, and most of those changes were very noticeable nerfs. Keep in mind while watching this that some reinforcements have to come in near the bottom, it's just the way rankings work. Most reinforcements are very good in their own right, but the competition is really stiff and I ultimately had to put each reinforcement head to head and just try my absolute best to decide which reinforcements were stronger than others. I had to do the same with my hero ranking, but if I were to go off the comments of that video, literally every single one of the 22 heroes deserved to be in my top 5 according to the comments, which obviously isn't possible or realistic. As we get near the top of today's reinforcement list, those are the reinforcements that are good in basically every situation and are downright dominant in others. And near the bottom of the list, we have reinforcements that are either a bit more situational or just have general weaknesses that can be exploited when fighting that reinforcement, which is a good way to look at some of these ranks. Well guys, with that being said, we may as well just get into it. If you do enjoy this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And let's dive into these ranks at number 19, which goes to the Ewok Hunter. For me, the Ewok was a relatively easy choice for dead last. They aren't awful or anything, but I just could not justify, no matter what way I looked at it, putting the Ewok over any of the other reinforcements. In basically every situation where an Ewok is available, I would rather have almost any other reinforcement. I mean, there's never been a single time where I faced off against an Ewok at full health and died. It just doesn't happen. They can be very fun to sit and hide and pick people off on maps like Yavin or Endor, especially as their charged bow shot does deal really nice damage on paper, but at the end of the day, there was no reinforcement I could place the Ewok above on this list, and that's why they take our number 19 spot. Moving up to number 18, we have the Wookiee Warrior. I mean, these guys are fine for what they are, but when I looked at the competition, I couldn't bring myself to put them over anyone else. The best thing about the Wookiees is their overload ability. It is legitimately very strong at point blank range. It will melt people extremely quickly. At medium ranges, their bowcaster is just okay at best. Just in raw damage output, their bowcaster is outclassed by almost every other reinforcement weapon once we get outside of very, very close ranges where it is decent. Their thermal imploder is nice enough and will kill a good amount of troops, although I think just speaking from being on the other end of that grenade, it is a very easy grenade to just get out of the way of if you're an experienced player because the sound cue is quite long and gives you more than enough time to just get out of the way and get behind cover. His fortify ability was replaced with a little slam, so while before the Wookiee could boost himself to nearly 500 health with the press of a button, he now just has a little slam. It's nice enough in a 1v1 to knock someone down and delete them, and you do also get some health back from the slam if you hit someone with it, but overall I personally just really miss the extra health, it was a lot more flexible in when it was useful. Overall, the Wookiee is not bad, he's just outclassed by those reinforcements that are coming up. At number 17, we have the Flame Trooper. Again, these guys are not bad. They do what they're meant to do well enough, but the Flame Trooper is one of the most situational units in the entire game. They really only excel in very specific situations where you're in close quarters and aren't going to get caught out in the open. Maz's castle on Takadana, the Resistance capital ship, certain places inside Starkiller base, those are some of the places where the Flame Trooper can excel if you put them in the right hands. DICE did give the Flame Trooper an option for ranged attacks with their secondary fire, which is nice enough, it was a nice little addition, but ultimately it didn't change a whole lot for the unit as a whole. I may have ranked these guys a spot or two higher if it weren't for the simple fact that even in the situations where the Flame Troopers are really good, if I am just going for kills and we're not taking into account the fun factor, I would still rather use the Sith Trooper indoors, even in the very specific areas that are Flame Trooper heaven. 
Okay, number 16 is when things started to get even more difficult for me when ranking these guys, but ultimately the ISB agent landed at 16. These guys are really, really fun if you use them as mostly a melee only weapon in small modes like Blast or Strike. They can be extremely effective at targeting single players and picking them off. And of course, every melee kill gives the ISB agent a huge portion of their health back. Their secondary fire is super nice for taking down ships on the few maps that have them where the ISB agent is available, like Hoth or Tatooine in Galactic Assault, and the double your effort ability is quite insane when it comes to regenerating the health of friendly heroes, which is probably the most powerful thing about this unit, even if it doesn't directly benefit you. However, their blaster's damage output is significantly outclassed by almost every other infantry blaster in the game, as well as most reinforcement blasters, so to really use these guys as intended, you need to be capitalizing on their melee. Unfortunately, not every situation lends itself to picking someone off with their kicks. I mean, you can't exactly start kicking someone's face in when their teammate is right next to them gunning you down on an open map, so I think the ISB agent is a bit more situational than those that rank higher up on our list. Moving up to number 15, we have the Droidica. First and foremost, these guys are a great value. Reinforcement prices are all over the place, and in a lot of cases, I think really don't make sense with what you're getting. I mean, the Droidica is only a thousand battle points and is very good for the price. Meanwhile, the Ewok Hunter is 2,000 battle points, which is way overpriced in my opinion. The Droidica has a lot going for it, but the main benefit of using a Droidica is their insane mobility. In ball form, the Droidica is extremely fast, which makes getting to an objective a cakewalk, and also makes forcing certain objectives into overtime over and over again very simple. When it comes to killing, you basically have to flank enemies and catch them off guard. If you try to be in the face of even somewhat competent enemies, by the time you transform, you'll have lost 70% of your health. So getting behind enemy lines and then transforming and popping your shield right as you're noticed is the best way to get some quick kills. And while I do think the other Separatist reinforcements are stronger, the Droidicas are a fun reinforcement and do their job well. At number 14 and 13, we have the Imperial and Rebel Rocket Troopers. The reason I'm ranking these guys together is because they have statistically identical blasters. And because blasters are the only thing that differentiates most of the aerials, these two are exactly the same statistically. The last time I did this ranking, both of these guys had completely different weapons. The Imperial Rocket Trooper had the default Heavy Blaster, and the Rebel Rocket Trooper had the A280. Well, DICE decided to just change the weapon of both of these units, the Imperial Rocket Trooper now has the E-11, and the Rebel has the A-280C, and while they do look different, it's just cosmetic, the stats are exactly the same. Everything from damage to recoil to rate of fire, you name it, everything is identical. These guys are really good, just like all aerials are. Their blasters don't hold up as well at range like the aerials that are coming up, but just by having that jetpack and the maneuverability all aerials have is more than enough to place these guys above several other reinforcements. Moving up one spot to number 12, we have the Rocket Droid. Unfortunately, DICE decided to nerf these guys with the final update. They used to have 100 extra health when compared to the other aerials, and now they just have the same health. However, their blaster is significantly better than the Rebel and Imperial Jump Troopers. It's mostly identical at close range, but it holds up way better at medium and long ranges. Also, the Rocket Droid still feels slightly tankier than the other aerials, because the hitbox for headshots on the Rocket Droid is a lot smaller than other units, so people are just going to be landing headshots on you way less, which is going to make it feel like you have a little bit more health. Overall though, the Rocket Droid is still very, very good, and for a 1000 point unit, it takes a very respectable spot at number 12. Number 11 goes to another aerial, this time the Resistance Jump Trooper. These guys just have a better weapon than the Jump Troopers we've already talked about, and that's all it boils down to. The EL-16 is one of the best blasters in the game, it's good at close, medium, and long ranges, and I don't really think I need any more of an explanation considering we've already covered everything else about the aerials already. Moving into our top 10, we have the best of the regular aerials, the Clone Aerial. Even after DICE hit their pistol with a pretty hard nerf to its range, the Clone Aerial is still very strong. Their pistol is incredible at close to medium ranges, and it holds up decently well at long range. Their pistol is also just the smoothest to use in combination with the Aerial's jetpack. There's just something so satisfying about landing shot after shot while in midair, and I've always found that the Clone Aerial is the best at tracking enemies, which most likely just comes down to the fact that their pistol has very little recoil. But yeah, for a thousand point unit to make it into our top 10 is very impressive, and the Clone Jump Trooper easily deserves it. 
This one might be a slight surprise to some, but the Avisian Gunner takes our number 9 spot. When the Rise of Skywalker update first came out, the Avisian Gunner was arguably the best reinforcement in all of Battlefront 2. Their primary weapon was insane because it was a full on sentry with basically no charge up time. You pulled the trigger and it fired. I would go into blast lobbies and not die the entire match because you could just melt people before they really even had a say in it. Well, DICE definitely heard the complaints about these guys and gave their primary weapon a pretty long charge up time, which really, really changed the way you need to play these guys. Nowadays, you have to be strategic and situate yourself where you can spool up your weapon without getting melted first. However, once you have that down and you figure out the best spots to situate yourself, the Avisian Gunner is still incredibly strong. Their sentry absolutely shreds once it gets going, their anti-armor mode can destroy vehicles, and their shoulder charge is a lot better now that it's fully controllable. However, that charge up time is an exploitable weakness with these guys, which does make them a bit more situational than others, but they still manage to make it into our top 10 at number 9. Moving up to number 8, we have the KFEX Spy. This might be somewhat of a hot take, but these days I just find the KFX Spy to be slightly stronger overall than the Avisian Gunner. Their pistol is very, very good with headshots, and if you do land those headshots, you'll be dropping almost everyone in just two shots. And I think a lot of people don't realize that his pistol is fully automatic. Just the way I see people firing at me, I just wonder if people know if you just hold down the trigger, it'll keep firing. It's a fully automatic gun, and once you figure that out, it's not clunky at all. I see a lot of people talking about his pistol being clunky clunky, but really it's just very, 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 very good. His rapid fire is insane, I mean you can melt a hero from full health in an instant with that ability, and his orbital strike is unbelievably good. It's pretty crazy that an orbital strike is a reinforcement ability, especially one as good as a KFX Spies. Outdoors, I honestly can see the argument for these guys to be top 5, just on the merit of their pistol and their strong orbital strike. I mean, you can clear an entire command post by yourself pretty easily. Indoors, where their orbital strike can't be used, they aren't quite as good. Their melee strikes are nice, they're not as good as the commando droids in my opinion, but they are still good when enemies get a little too close for comfort. Their pistol obviously still holds up really well, and their orbital strike slash scanner beacon can primarily be used to reveal enemies, which is always nice. I originally had these guys a lot lower, but after revisiting them I just found myself really going off and appreciating these guys for just how strong they are. At number 7 we have a unit that has been up and down and up and down. DICE has messed with these guys so many times, but I think they ended up in a nice spot, and I am of course talking about the ARC Trooper. At one point in time these guys were borderline OP, I mean you could fire their blasters forever at an unlimited rate of fire, which made absolutely shredding heroes from full health a common occurrence. However, they nerfed their overheat really early on so you couldn't fire for nearly as long, and then a while back they decided to remove the ability to fire as fast as you wanted completely, and nowadays the ARC Trooper just has a preset rate of fire. You can toggle between faster and less accurate for up close, and much lower but more accurate for long ranges. They tweaked the fire rate and damage a couple of times, and I think where they left them is pretty alright. They can deal a ton of damage up close and very quickly, and at long ranges you can really pick people off with either their secondary fire which can be used with basically no cooldown now, or their long range firing mode, although I usually just go with their secondary fire as it does get the job done really well at long ranges. Their helmet scanner is great for revealing enemies, I mean that's always helpful, and their shock trap basically guarantees you a dub in a 1v1. I mean if you shock trap an infantry player or an enemy reinforcement and then still die in that 1v1, well it might be time for you to get off for the night. Getting very close to our top 5, at number 6 we have the most underrated reinforcement in Battlefront 2 by a mile, the B2 Super Battle Droid. I don't know why people continue to sleep on the B2, but these guys are insanely good. I think people just underrate these guys because their abilities aren't that memorable. I mean they have overload, fortify, and a rocket, nothing that really stands out from the crowd, at least as far as being unique goes. However, all three of those abilities are really, really good and make for one of the all around best units in Battlefront 2. Their blaster is incredible, and combined with the amount of health these guys have, I almost feel like I'm picking on other reinforcements in small modes like Blast and Strike because they are so, so powerful. Their overload ability is similarly insane, I think they just have the best overload ability of any unit because how fast you can melt a hero from full health with a single use of the B2's overload is ridiculous. Really their only weakness is their mobility, you have to play these guys in a way that keeps enemies at a distance as much as you possibly can. They do perfectly fine up close, 
but the best way to play these guys is to pick your battles before they even get near you. Anyway, the B2 Super Battle Droid is just great. I wanted them in my top 5 as they might be my favorite overall reinforcement to use, but I felt that there were 5 units that were even stronger than the Super Battle Droid. Okay, we are now into our top 5, and kicking it off is the Clone Commando. Yeah, these guys are just great at almost everything. Want to melt a vehicle? You got it. Want to drop enemies up close without a worry in the world? No problem. Want to humiliate a hero by yeeting him onto the floor and then dropping him with headshots, all the while regenerating your own health while damaging them? The Clone Commando is the reinforcement for the job. These guys are just so good and so satisfying to use. Their weapon is definitely meant to be used at close to medium ranges, and it's so good at doing exactly that. Gone are the days where the Clone Commando was unbelievably overpowered. I'm sure some of you guys remember when DICE released them with a borderline game breaking bug they didn't fix for a month, but even after that was fixed they are still very strong and managed to secure a spot in our top 5. At number 4 we have the highest ranking aerial on today's list, which goes to, probably unsurprisingly, the First Order Jet Trooper. Uh, do I really need to justify this ranking? I mean the First Order Jet Troopers jetpack is insanely good and on that alone they deserve to be in our top 5. You can just hover above your enemies for what feels like an eternity and their primary weapon has splash damage which makes landing every single shot even on a moving target a complete cakewalk. Their tri-barrel explosive shot is also good if you want to damage multiple enemies at once, and their jet tackle is definitely something I'm not using all the time because I try not to put myself in a situation where I need to use it, but it is a very effective ability when you find yourself out of jetpack fuel and in a tough spot. Obviously, as an aerial they don't have a ton of health, but you really don't notice it most of the time on account of how hard they can be for most enemies to hit. Okay, moving up another position to number 3, we have the unit that previously ranked at number 1, the Commando Droid. Even after the nerf to their blaster, these guys are still godlike. They are the type of unit you can pick up early in a match and stay alive the entire time if you play things out in a decently smart way. Their melee strikes are unbelievably good and are a big part of what makes the Commando Droid the type of reinforcement that can go toe to toe with even a decent hero. Their melee strikes are fast, they deal high damage, and if you do manage to land the third and final strike and score a knockdown, the hero you're fighting either isn't getting out of that fight alive, or they'll scurry off with most of their health gone. Their ability to reveal enemies plays right into their overall playstyle, and their dash and jump are among the best in the business, and also make them a hard target to hit, especially when you combine it with their smokescreen ability, which can get you out of a tough situation if need be. I honestly didn't think the nerf to their blaster was at all necessary, but it's still a strong blaster up close, and it serves its purpose when needed. For my money, the Commando Droid is far and away the best of the Separatist reinforcements, and is very deserving of a spot in our top 5. The runner up spot goes to a unit that is really a strong choice no matter the situation, and that is the Death Trooper. Going into this list before I'd even really thought about it, I kind of already knew or at least suspected that these guys would either end up at number 1, 2, or 3 because they're just that good, and even without thinking about it I knew these guys would come in really close to the top. The Death Trooper is absolutely dominant in the vast majority of situations. Close, medium, even longish ranges, the Death Trooper absolutely shreds other reinforcements. If you are a newer player and are wondering why they jumped up in the rankings because I think they were 4th last time, DICE did give them a new blaster a while back, and while their old blaster was very good at close range, their new blaster just makes them a lot more versatile. I also love how they remove the movement restriction on their overload ability, it used to be that you'd activate it and you couldn't run or anything, but now you can just run around full speed like Sonic with overload active, which makes dropping an enemy before they even know what hit them comically easy. The Death Trooper is also among the tankiest reinforcements, I mean once you pop fortify there's really no losing a 1v1 against another reinforcement because their damage output, effective range, and their health is unmatched by any other original trilogy era reinforcement on the light side, which makes them feel even stronger, because their direct competition consists of Ewoks, Wookiees, and the Rebel Aerial, which are all fine reinforcements, but none of which are nearly as dominant as the Death Trooper. I do miss when their Sonic Imploder used to reveal enemies, but they increase both the damage and the damage radius of that ability to make up for that change, which I think was a decent enough trade off. For me, spots 1 and 2 are probably arguable, but the Death Trooper is, in my opinion, a top 2 reinforcement in Battlefront 2 and takes home the runner up spot on today's list. Alright, at the very top of today's list we have a reinforcement that ranked slightly lower the last time around, and that is the Sith Trooper. 
I mean, these guys are just the assault class on steroids, and these guys just kind of had to come in at number one. They are just so good at everything, honestly. They're good at everything. Their SMG is incredible at dealing out quick damage at close and medium ranges. Their secondary fire is great if you find yourself in a longer range engagement. And their repression grenade is an incredibly powerful explosive that just wipes out groups of enemies and leaves everyone it doesn't completely kill unable to regenerate any health. In addition to that, Combat Rush is a ridiculously powerful ability that just gives you rapid and instant health regeneration for its entire duration so long as you're getting some kills in there. And Seeker Tactics is yet another ability that just reveals enemies for you, which speaks for itself that's always so useful. The Sith Trooper just kind of has everything going for it. You're never going to find yourself in a situation where you regret picking a unit like the Sith Trooper. They aren't my personal favorite to use, that would probably go to the Commando Droid or the B2 Super Battle Droid, but the Sith Trooper is just so powerful that I couldn't justify putting it anywhere else than number one. Well guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below, and if you did enjoy and could drop a like, I would definitely appreciate it. Also, we did just hit a quarter of a million subscribers over the weekend, which is awesome, so thank you guys for subscribing and watching the videos and doing your thing. Also, also, I just wanted to give another shout out to Displate. This video isn't specifically sponsored by them or anything like that, but so many of you guys ordered Displates of your own the last time I promoted them, I definitely want to keep spreading the word. They make really, really cool posters that are made out of metal, they look incredible on the wall and are super easy to hang up, and they have an unbelievable lineup of officially licensed Star Wars Displates, or really anything you can think of. If you want some of your own, my link in the description will get you a discount. Just use the link and that discount will be automatically applied at checkout. I believe it's a 20% discount right now, and that's off your entire order, whatever you decide to get. Alright, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.